Okay, welcome to metric conversion without math. What does that mean? We're going to go through how to do a metric conversion problem without using any math. We're going to change from one unit of the metric system to another unit in the metric system without math. Now, these slides are made specifically for a class called Anatomy 10A Lab at Mount San Antonio College. It's in Walnut, California. So the things that I say applies to our class specifically. If you are not in Anatomy 10A Lab, keep in mind that some of the stuff I say, like the units I mentioned, may or may not be required for you to know. But if you are in Anatomy 10A Lab, then yes, these units that I will be discussing will be stuff that you are responsible for. So let's start. What is conversion? Conversion is changing from one unit to another. So what's a unit? A unit tells you the amount of something that you have. To make it more understandable, let's talk about money, since we all can relate to money. When we talk about money, in the US, uh, in, in the US system, we have units such as one cent, we have units such as one dollar, and then of course we have units such as one grand. So, I am going to show you, you know, the difference. For example, if you have one penny, okay, that would be a penny, and this is a dollar bill. This is one penny, that's one dollar. Of course, you know, it's two very different things. Why? Because the unit is different. Because the unit is different, the amount is different. Now, I don't have a grand to show you, but if I have a grand, I would post it up here, and then I would ask you, which do you want? A cent, a dollar, or a grand? And of course, I'm sure all of you will say you want a grand, because that's the most value of all. Now, in terms of unit, you can also money. You know that we have a decimal point here. And in this very first column, this is the dollar column. The next column over, you know in math, is called tens, and then the next column over is hundreds, and the next column over is a thousand. But because we're talking about money, this would be the grand column, and this is the dollar column, or the ones column. And then on the other side of the decimal point, we have the cent column. So, let's review. We talked about how one grand is equal to $1,000. What did you do? Basically, you just moved the decimal point. You may not realize you were doing that because you're so used to money, but that's what we'll be doing, just moving the decimal point. Before we go to how to do something, let's talk about the different system that we have. The metric system is, uh, is used by most people in the world, whereas the English system is used by us here in the United States and in England, thus the name English. What does it measure? Well, the metric system measures length, volume, and mass. So does the English system. But we have different terms for these things. In the metric system, when we measure length, it's just meter. When we measure volume, it's liter. And we, when we measure mass, it's gram. But in the English system, there are multiple words, multiple units, if you will. And they're all different. For example, in the English system, when we measure length, we mean inch, foot, yard, mile, etc. When we measure volume, we can talk about cup, pint, quart, or gallon. And when we measure grams, or mass, I'm sorry, when we measure mass, we can talk about ounce or pound. The difficulty comes in converting from one unit to the other in the English system because there's no set rule. You just have to memorize the conversion factor. For example, there are 16 ounces into a pound, so you have to memorize the number 16. You have to memorize that there are two cups in one pint, and that there are four quarts into one gallon. Once again, they're different numbers. And certainly, we all know there are 12 inches into a foot, but yet there are three feet in a yard. Okay, so because these numbers are different, you have to memorize them, and that makes conversion a little bit more difficult. On the metric system, on the other hand, is very simple, because it's like the number line. Everything is base 10. 
one digit over is either 10 greater or 10 less than the previous digit. Now, when we say that, we give prefixes to these uh, uh, columns, to these units. Let's continue. Here in the metric system, we have the ones column, and in the ones column is when you're going to have the general meter, liter, or grams, depending on what it is that you're measuring. If you're measuring distant, volume, or mass. However, as you move to another column, this would be the tens column, the hundred column, there are prefixes here, but for anatomy 10a, you don't have to know these prefixes. What you do have to know, though, is the prefix over here, which is kilo. Okay, For the thousand column, the prefix is kilo. On the other side, two places over from the decimal point, which is smaller than the whole number, you have the centi column. Now, just word of advice, notice how centi looks a lot like cent. So if you can remember the U.S. money system, cent is in this column. That's the same column as centi, okay? Going back to money. Here, this column, instead of being meter, liters, or grams, in money, it will be the dollar. And then, of course, over here, we mentioned array, that would be the grand. And then on this other side of the decimal point, that would be the cent. And you all know when I ask, one grand, what is one grand equals? You all know that one grand equals $1,000. How do we do that? Well, we just know it. But let's talk about a system, a systematic way of figuring it out. Let's say if you don't know it, okay, what do you do? You move the decimal point, okay? Rule of thumb to follow, the decimal point is always to the right of that unit, unless you are told otherwise. So let's do a conversion problem. Let's say you don't know that one grand equals a thousand dollars, but you have to figure it out. So what do you do? Well, keep this number line in mind. Step one, the first thing you do is you start with what you have been given. I want you to know where your starting unit is, and I want you to know where the starting decimal point is. Okay, two things. Keep in mind that the decimal point is always to the right of that unit, unless you are told something else. So for example, when we say one grand, where is the decimal point? Well, the decimal point would be right here. Okay, to the right of the whole number. What unit are we in? We're in grand. Step two, find the decimal point on the number line. Remember this number line? Okay. Now, you say, well, there's the decimal point. Yeah, yeah, that's not the, the decimal point I'm talking about. With the problem that we're given of one grand, you've got to first find the unit. Well, the unit is here. So we're going to start with this column. When we're in this column, the decimal point for this column is to the right. So that would be right here. In other words, we said already that in this number, the decimal point is here. I know I'm putting a letter X so it's easier to see, but really it should be a dot. Okay. So this decimal point is the same as this decimal point. Because remember, when we're in this column, the decimal point for this column is always to the right, okay? So this decimal point and this decimal point is the same decimal point. Step three, you're gonna write this number on the number line. So if this decimal point and this decimal point is the same thing, one space over to the left of the decimal point is the number one, so you bring that down. Here's the decimal point, one space over to the left is the, is the number, so we're going to put in the number one here. Okay, so far so good? Step four, what are you looking for? Find the desired unit on the number line. In this particular problem, we want dollars. So here's the dollar column. Okay, that's where we want to go. Now we go to step five. Find the new decimal point on the line. Well, if we are in the dollar column, that's the desired unit, the decimal point is always to the right of that unit. So to the right of the unit is right here. So I'm going to make this darker, okay? The new decimal point 
is here because we want to be in the dollar column now. Step six, fill in the blanks on the number line with zero. That is, here is a blank, so we're going to fill it with zero. Here's another blank with zero. Here's another blank with zero. Now you can stop at this point, but if you want to continue filling in with zero, be my guest. It doesn't make a difference. But now you have your answer. The new answer is one grand is equal to one thousand dollar. That is number one and three zeros. One, two, three, and we're in the dollar column. The new decimal point is now here. You don't have to put it in, but it's understood to be there. And that's your answer, which is what we already know. It's always good to confirm your answer using another method than just saying, oh, I just know that. Okay. So let's review the steps that we have to take. First step, you start with what you have. Know that unit that you're starting with and know where the decimal point is for that unit. Step two, find the same decimal point on that number line. Remember, you have to come up with a number line yourself. Step three, write this number that you're given on the number line. Step four, find a desired unit on the number line. That is, what is it that you're looking for on the number line? Step five, find the decimal point for that new unit. And remember, the decimal point is always to the right of that unit. And then step six, Fill in the blanks in between with zero. And that's it. Those are the steps you need to take. So let's do some practice problem. Back to metric. Now, as I mentioned, in red would be the metric units. So here in the ones column, I abbreviated M, L, and G for meter, liters, and grams. This would be in the ones column. There is a metric prefix called kilo. And kilo means thousand. Okay, so in such a way that one kilometer, one km is the abbreviation for kilometer, is equal to 1,000 meters, or 1,000 m. Now, I want you to pause this tape and do this using the six steps we just talked about. For the meter, or liter, or grams. It should all be the same thing because the prefix is all the same to begin with and the ending is all the same. Okay, so you can do it for all three or you can do it just for one to confirm that you know what you're doing. Continue when you're done. Okay, hopefully as you use those six steps, you should come up with the thousand number here, like what we just did with the, uh, the money problem. Okay, so let's move on. Back to money. Instead of focusing on this column, I want now to go to this column for money. In money, when we say one dollar, we mean a hundred cents. Okay, what do we do? We move the decimal point again. But you can say, well, I just know that already. I know that a dollar is a hundred cents. But let's not do that. Let's just figure out how we can go about doing this using the six steps I mentioned. Okay, so let's do it now. With those six steps, what we can say is a dollar. This is the starting point, right? With a dollar, the, new, the starting point is in the dollar column, which is here. And the decimal point for this number is expected to be here. Okay. So, going to the timeline, the dollar is in this column. This is the decimal point for that column. So, this x... And this x is the same decimal point. One space to the left of the decimal point is the number 1. This is a decimal point. One space to the left is the number 1. So I'm going to write in the number 1 here. But we don't want dollar. We want in cents. So we're going to go to the cent column, which is here. And now when we're in the cent column, the new decimal point for this column is always to the right. So the new decimal point would be here. And the last step you have to do is fill in the blanks with zero. So there's a zero here and a zero here. Thus, one dollar equals a hundred cents. Does that make sense?
Okay, as I said before, if you understood the 100 cents equal a dollar, the metric system for this column is centi. So hopefully that helps you to remember it. Centi is this column, so the same relationship holds. One meter, when you're in this column, is going to equal 100 centimeters. Okay, like we did with the money before. One meter, abbreviated as 1m, is going to be equal to 100 centimeters or 100 cm as an abbreviation. At this point, I want you to pause the tape and do this on your own using the six steps we just talked about for liters and for grams. Continue when you're done. Okay, I hope you were able to figure out and came up with the same answer, 100 doesn't matter if you're doing liters or grams because we're starting with this column here and we're ending up in this column here. The answer should be the same. There's, there are two more metric units that I want you to know for anatomy 10A. The next unit we're going to talk about is milli. That's this column right here. The milli column it means that it for every one meter, it's going to take, uh, it will be equal to 1,000 millimeters. Okay, 1,000 millimeters. So, abbreviated one meter is 1m, that's equal to 1,000 mm. Okay, now once again, I want you to take the six steps that we talked about and go through this to make sure you understand. So, number one, start with what you have. What you have is one meter. One meter is the starting unit. Where is the decimal point for this number? It is understood to be right here. Here's the decimal point for this number. Step number two, go to the number line and find that same starting point. It will be here. When we are here in this column, the decimal point is right here. Okay, remember, the decimal point for any column is to the right of it. So the decimal point, starting off, is here. This decimal point marked by the x, and that decimal point is the same decimal point. One space over is the number 1. One space over to the left should be the number 1. This is how we write this number on the number line. Next step is to figure out the new unit that you want. In this example, the unit we're interested in is millimeters, which means this is the unit of interest right here. That's the new unit you want to look for. When we are in this column, the new unit decimal point will have to be to the right. So that is the new decimal point for millimeters. Okay. And then the last step is to fill in the blanks with zero. One, two, three. So therefore, the answer is, for one meter, you have a thousand millimeters. I hope that makes sense. At this point, I want you to pause the tape and do this on your own for liters and grams. Okay, hopefully you came up with the same answers. That is, a liter is equal to a thousand milliliters or a thousand ml, and a gram is equal to a thousand milligrams or a thousand mg. Why are they the same? Because our starting unit is here, and our ending unit is over here. It does not matter if it's meters, liters, or gram, as long as your starting unit and your ending unit prefixes is the same, you should get the same answer. Let's move on. For anatomy 10A, you have to know one more unit in metrics, and that is micro. Way over here. Very small number. You may be wondering, gee, why are we talking about such a small amount? When does it ever become important? Remember, this is anatomy, and anatomy is talking about the human body. Uh, in human anatomy, we can go into the cellular level. In fact, later on, you're going to be looking at some histology slides, and you'll be looking at cells. Cells are very, very small. We can't see them with the naked eye. So somewhere here, you can see these structures with the naked eye. But when you get down to the micro level, it's not possible. We need to use a microscope. And that's why we have to talk about this small unit. 
Incidentally, I don't think the English system has the equivalent of the micro unit. So by default, we have to talk about the metric systems when we talk about science. Oftentimes in science, we deal with very small amount and to the other extreme, very large amount. All of these numbers are very hard to handle when we talk about the English system, but it is easily handled in the metric system. So this is the reason why in science we need to talk about metric. Okay, so enough of that, let's go back to the problem. When we're in this column, what we're saying is that one meter here, one meter starting point, is going to equal to a million micrometers. By the way, another word for micrometers is microns. So if you see this, it's the same thing. Uh, one meter is going to be equal to a million micrometers. I want you to go through the six steps on how to figure this out for yourself. Here I will continue talking about it. Remember, step number one, start with what you have. This is what you have, one meter. In this example, what is the unit? The unit is meter, the starting point. With the meter, where is the decimal point in this problem? Right now, the decimal point is right here, okay? So that's the starting decimal point, that's the starting unit. I want you to bring this to the number line. Here's the number line, step two. Step two, find the decimal point. This decimal point is right here. Why? Because this is the starting unit, okay? The starting unit is here, which means the decimal point for this unit is always to the right. So this is the starting unit decimal point. Step three, bring this number into the number line. This decimal point is the same thing as that decimal point, which means one space to the left of the decimal point is the number one, one space to the left of the decimal point is the number one. So there we go. That's the next step. And then you now go on to find what you're looking for. Next step, we're looking for micrometers, right? Micrometers. And you find it on the number line. Micrometer is over here. That's where we want to go. So now what you got to do is find the decimal point for this new unit. Remember, the decimal point is always to the right of that unit. So the new decimal point is here. And so... Last thing you have to do, step six, is to fill in the blanks with zero. Here you have a lot of blanks. So you're going to fill in with zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six zeros all together. And sure enough, one meter, the abbreviated one M, is equal to a million micrometers or a million microns. Six zeros. Six zeros, okay? So we proved that that's what it is. By the way, the abbreviation for micro is the letter mu. It's a Greek letter that looks like that. It's like a curly M versus a regular M for milli, okay? So when you see that uh, Greek letter mu, think micrometers. Okay, I now want you to pause the videotape and try to do the same thing for liters and grams, turn them into micro liters and micrograms. Follow the six steps I taught, uh, I taught you. Pause the tape, continue when you're done. Okay, I hope that uh, you were able to come up with the same number, a million microliters and a million micrograms, if you were to start with liters or we'll start with grams. Okay. This is the end of the basic instructions. Go ahead and go on to some of the practice problems to see if you really understand how to do metric to metric conversion. Good luck.